Hi, welcome to season 3, episode 3 of OCD Geeks. I'm Chris. And I'm Jack. Hi guys, welcome back. Today we decided to focus our episode to a brand new movie that actually came out this week and it's an Apple TV Plus original. Yes, we are talking about the teen movie Sky is Everywhere, a movie by Josephine Decker. It's an adaptation from the book by Jan D. Nelson with the same title. Actually, me and Chris were quite curious to see this movie because we know it had a mix of features, some kind in between teenage drama and fantasy story. Yeah, with big role of music as well. Yes, that's an important feature. So basically, don't worry guys, because we would like to keep this episode spoiler free. So what you're hearing about the plot, it's just something that happens in the first couple of minutes of the story. So we would like to keep it this way in order for you to fully appreciate and enjoy your way. Jack, would you tell our listener just the very basics uh, of the plot? Yes, Chris, the plot actually might sound quite simple. Well, of course, it's a teenage story and being a drama, it has some kind of the most stereotypical traits like for example the first love and uh, the first loss and all the processes of growing that we confront in high school years and the first adolescence so namely this story narrates the life of Lenny and Bailey two sisters since birth they are quite connected to each other, completely involved in uh, natural elements. They like nature itself, they are so involved in music, and I don't want to say telepathic, but they have a strong connection. They exactly share what they are thinking, they actually like the same things, wandering around in the world, discovering new stuff together. Actually, this really strong bond at one point of the story gets broken. That's what we call the loss. This movie focuses is actually on this loss and the processes of grief that the loss brings about. You can see the emotional roller coaster of the main character that basically switch from moments of depression, negativity, very happy moments that are related to her first approach to be in some kind of relationship with another schoolmate. Somehow this movie recalls the theme of high school adolescence lessons switching from the teenage years to the young adults one even if our experience might be completely different compared to the main characters of this movie but somehow it bring my memory to that period of my life the troubled moments uh, where we all experience something particularly strong may be the first loves and the first uh, particular affection to other mates and the first great challenges as a feature of this movie, there is also a quirky aspect, a kind of a really vivid and fantastic trait in the narrating line of the story. Chris, for example, if you pay attention to the main characters of the story, they are extrovert and extravagant. About her relatives, she doesn't have a father. Her mom passed away many years before. Basically, her uncle and grandmother were kind of parenting a figure in her life. Yes, loss of the mother. Actually, Actually brings all the family closer together. The aunt and the uncle get closer to the nieces and I think they really form a, a strong bond between them and a family in every way. Music is one of the main theme or even a character in this movie. So for example the girl has a big passion for it especially to play clarinet. She is really talented at it since she was thinking even to apply to very prestigious classical music school but the personal happenings in her life change even her relationship with music she felt like it's not worth to play anymore. Yes, of course, uh, the loss affects the music and her vision, but at the same time, music still has a, a great and important part in, in this movie. For example, impersonated by Joe, a young great musician that she meets, she gets uh, infatuated. So Joe resembles music in its purest form. He plays a lot of instruments and it's very positive. He manages to keep her away from her grief. He doesn't let her think too much about the loss that happened in her life he plays a very important part but on yeah. the other side also the other main character that we we haven't cited yet is toby bailey's ex-boyfriend 
has a great part in this movie because he also stimulates an improvement in uh, Lenny's character. You know, still talking about music differently from many other teenage movies, in this one it is not like the usually rock and pop soundtrack that plays a big role, but instead is classical music. So the movie starts with the theme of the first season of Vivaldi, other references for example to Bach. Classical music holds a very important spot in this movie. It's unconventional as you said Chris. It's quite rare but I appreciated this part and also it plays a role in make this narration of the story in a delicate way. It tells themes very important for an adolescence like lost and first love in a meaningful way with the occasional sense of humor and jokes even if this is not a comedy movie by any means. Of course Chris. So the story as I said feature classical music instead of pop or rock music that many teenage movies share. I appreciate it because of course there are great music for example Vivaldi's Four Seasons or even uh, Bach but I believe that classical music helps to make the narration of the story in a delicate way. Yes Chris I agree actually I think that since nature plays a such an important part in this movie also classical music you know is connected to vitality of nature so also the Four Seasons by Vivaldi is a great piece of classical music connected to human roots I appreciated how the, the spreading of nature is portrayed in the movie all starts from the imagination of the protagonist Lenny and also what happens around her you know, it's reproduced in a very scenographic mean by the direction. Like her um, moods. Like her moods, for example, you can or, see all the troubles uh, in an adolescent's mind. You remember there was her grandmother and there was a raining cloud right at the top of her head. It's really a mix between our environment and the nature around us and our feelings, with uh, yes. a lot of imagination, of course. Yes, yes, it's very fantastic like you know the imagination of a young adolescent who is still a child also think about the scene where Joe and, and Lenny lean down on the grass and they start to put their their headphones on listening to music together and how the words around them spins and modifies according to their imagination that's a very poetic scene which touched my heart you know Chris the scenography made me remember an important director very famous recently which is Michel Gondry a clay uh, by the public for the famous movie The Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind which is one of my favorite movies uh, of all time most recently by Moon Indigo I don't know exactly the pronunciation which was also directed in a very fantastic way and also the nature was represented like in this movie and so I could spot a few of these references throughout the whole movie and I really appreciated it This is an Apple TV Plus original movie you know guys that the quality of the production of this uh, streaming service is really high so I was not surprised about the amazing features regarding the cinematography, music and acting that this movie provides. Okay guys I would like to add that I don't know how many of you have watched uh, the show How I Met Your Mother, I think most of you have but there is also another great acquaintance from this show which is Jason Siegel, the famous man Marshall. I'm, I'm quite sure that all of you will appreciate this cameo, yeah. let's say so, even if it's not a cameo because he plays an actual part. In the movie. Yeah, even for example, like we did in one of the latest episodes uh, last year, 8 Bit Christmas with the great Neil Patrick Harris. Yeah, actually, in our collective imaginary and imagination, they will ever be portraying those characters, and it would be really difficult to imagine themselves in other shoes. Yeah, but you know, it's still good to see them in other productions as well. Yes, recently with Jason Siegel I also watched another movie, one of my favorite recently, which is The End of the Tour. I don't know if you watched it, Chris. It's a drama about some biographic uh, book written by David Lipsky about the famous American novelist and writer David Foster Wallace. So Jason Siegel portrays this introvert and dominated character. He does it in, in a great way, according to me. Last but not least, there is not only the role of music, but also 
also the role of literature. In fact, the main character has a big passion for Weathery Nights. Also, one of the boys in her music class has the same passion for this classical book. If you are familiar with this one, you can expect many references that I was not able to catch since I didn't read that one, but I'm sure that many of you have. Yes, I'm sure you've studied in high school, Chris. Maybe like some kind of short paragraph, but not the full one. Yeah, you know, there is this mention to Heathcliff in the movie. Heathcliff is one of the main characters of Wuthering Heights his the portrayal of the lover and uh, Lenny at one point of the story is battled between two possible lovers I don't want to say anything else but there is this mentioning to Heathcliff I really appreciated that also there is a reference to other teen novels one of the first that came to my mind, John Green's quite recent book, Looking for Alaska. Alaska, such as Lenny, is a troubled girl who is writing poetry and little notes about herself and about her lives on every kind of surface, like Lenny does. You know, Lenny writes her thoughts on a paper, on a string, on a shoe, on a wall. So Jack, would you recommend this brand new movie to our listeners? Yes, I would recommend this movie especially to young adolescents that gets through these really delicate moments. Yeah, and like I said, also to everyone, even adults that are just uh, are a bit nostalgic to that uh, unique period of our lives. That's right, Chris. I, I really agree. Guys, don't forget to let us know your opinion in the section comments down below. If you want to interact with us directly, you are welcome to reach us on Instagram and Twitter at Chris underscore OCD Geeks as well as Jack underscore OCD Geeks. You can also visit our website www.ocdgeeks.me. So for now, let them talk our freaks. We stay tuned on OCD Geeks.